And in fact, you said that prior to coming out and testifying that the only person you were afraid of, you didn't want to be around, was Investigator Hamilton from the district attorney's office. Is that true? Yes. And that you didn't want to come out and see him because he had sexually harassed you. True? Yes. And we are back and we are back. Thank you all for watching this video. Go ahead and hit that like button. You already know you're going to like the video, so go ahead and like it. It helps us out and it helps you out because it helps us out. It helps us keep making this great content for you. Now, today, this is going to be another hodgepodge of different clips, but the underlying theme of today is relationships and relational misconduct. So we're going to go from some lighthearted clips to some more serious clips. And if you if you know how to infer what I'm talking about, I'm trying to use a YouTube friendly word when I say relationships, relationships and relational misconduct. So first, we're going to start off with a clip from this most recent week. Did y'all catch it when Quisdaria Zachary insinuated that he and D.A. Love had had a relationship I think it was a lighthearted moment, but let's take a look anyway. When you all got to Perry Holmes, who was it that got out and shot at that time? Oh, no. Did Tay, D, and Shannon get out and shoot at Perry Holmes? Uh, who? Tay, D, and Shannon. On the person who dealt with me and Gardens. So is that a no? I never saw Shannon that day or no Tay. Would you answer whether that's a no? When I ask you, did Tay, D, and Shannon. He's trying to put people down who want I'm to trying go. to just ask you a question. Did Tay, D, and Shannon get out and shoot at Perry Holmes? No. Okay. Did you tell the police that Tay, D, and Shannon got out and shoot, shot at Perry Holmes? I don't know. Do you remember how many guns you all had in total? A hundred. All right. Did anybody else join you all other than the ones that either you talked about today or that you told the police were with you? Uh, huh? I don't understand that question. Did a person named Lee ever join you all? No. Did you tell the police that a person named Lee joined you all? No. Did you tell the police, did a person named Lee got out and shot with a handgun. I don't even know no damn Lee. You don't know a handgun? I don't know a Lee. And do you remember telling the police that Lee was in the car with Tay and them because that was Tay's friend? I don't know. Did you get dropped off at Silvan Road after all this happened? I don't know. Did you get dropped off at a Chevron by 166? I don't know. Did you tell the police that you got dropped off on Silver Road at the Chevron by 166? Objection. 403. Sustained. Do you remember who dropped you off? You did. After all. Okay. I did. Yeah. Did you tell the police I did? No, I didn't want them to know we were messing around. Okay. You did. Okay. Now, did you tell the police that Summer's cousin dropped? You all off at the house. No. Some people took that seriously, y'all. Sometimes I'm I'm worried about people. People are like, what? They were messing around. Obviously, he was just joking, but it was a kind of funny, lighthearted moment, y'all. And we're gonna move to another lighthearted moment involving Mr. Zachary when he had finished testifying for his first day. This was on a Friday, and he thought he might go home. And he had to learn that he wasn't going to go home. But he, he he came up on the spot. He came up with a, a bright idea. Maybe a particularly attractive assistant or DA. I'm not sure who she was, honestly. But someone he apparently found attractive. Maybe she could assist him. So let's take a look. So, Mr. Zachary, I am sorry that we were not able to finish with your testimony today. We had, I mean, you saw the juror run out. I mean, she had some sort of a sickness issue and I think she threw up and I mean having just come from the hospital you probably understand um but she's too sick to continue today and so we're gonna have to pick up on Monday and so what I think 
would be the best thing to do in the meantime is over the weekend to just put you up in a hotel room somewhere. You can, I I know it's not awesome, but well, because there are certain members of your family who seem, um, very determined to have you not finish testifying. Oh, oh man. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't want there to be kind of, if I didn't want to testify, I'll sit in jail. Jail ain't nothing to me. I'm well, did 19 years. So you'd rather go to jail than a hotel room? Oh, I'm ready to go home. I know you are. I know. But we're going to have you in a hotel room. You are welcome to have your mom or your sister there over the weekend. But I just think that it's better if it's a more controlled environment um, where your father is not going to be wreaking, causing stress for any of y'all. Okay. My father don't call stress with me. He calls stress with them. He pulled to do that. I know. Well, I don't know that. But if he causes stress with them, then that, that might cause stress to you. So. You, they took my phones. Can you tell them to get my phones back? Um, Which phones? My you, phone? Just for you to come testify? I don't know. They took them. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You, no, the officer back there took them. I mean. When they took, him in custody. They, yeah, they took both they my cell phones. I mean, I don't really. They ain't turn them into property. I don't really have a problem with him having his phones. The issue is him showing up for court. So it's fine with me if he gets his phones back. So is there anything else you wanted to let the court know? Yeah, I don't want that lawyer no more. You don't want that lawyer. Why are you working anymore? for them? All right. Well, let me say this. When you come back um, on Monday, it may be that you want a lawyer. lawyer. You don't you don't feel like you need any kind of lawyer whatsoever. So what if things change on Monday? I don't need no lawyer. All right. Well, Mr. Scheib, thank you for your service. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Anything else? Hang on, hang on. I'm asking actually Mr. Zachary right now. Mr. Zachary, is there anything else that you need to? I'm going to. No, no, because what's going to happen is that somebody probably from the DA's office is going to escort you to whichever hotel this is they end up um, putting. Can it be Hall walking out the door? Can it be what? Hall oh, right, walking out the door. I don't know whether it's going to be that particular investigator or not. (laughs) She know it. It might be. It might not be. It's not going to be up to me. All right. What else? That's it. Okay. So we'll they'll they will get you bit of in not too much longer. Okay. All right. And we'll see you Monday. Your Honor. at the risk of just okay there we see it was an investigator he was trying to holler at an investigator from the witness stand some people actually criticize Paige Whitaker Judge Whitaker for laughing and for not admonishing him you know I, I don't know how serious that was it looked like a little joking moment but you know he was he was trying to get at her y'all and actually if you stay to the end of this video, if you hang in there till the end of this video, I am going to give you an indication whether he got her or not, y'all. I'm going to give you an indication. Now, remember, this is all lighthearted. People, please don't take this seriously and don't say, oh, you know, it's just a, it's, it's half joking. But I do have something to show you. I do have something to show you that will leave you wondering, hmm, maybe Zachary got gay. So if you hang out to the end of this video, We're going to give you an indication. All right. With this next clip, we are going to look at actually something that we covered over the summer when there was a judge who after Judge Glanville was recused, there was a judge who was going to take over before Judge Whitaker. But she recused herself as well because a bailiff had previously got involved relationally with one of the co-defendants on trial. So I'm going to play this clip. This clip has a little bit of kind of ticking clock 
uh, sound with it. So just FYI, but I'm going to play this clip so you can see this is another one of these situations. This is getting a little bit more serious. Another situation where there's some relational stuff going on in relation to this to this trial. Why did Judge Ingram recuse herself? So Judge Ingram recused herself because this young lady here uh, that we're about to see in this news report was her deputy and apparently did something naughty, wrong, prohibited with one of the then YSL defendants. Here today and accused of trying to smuggle contraband to a defendant in the case. This deputy, Akiba Stanley, in this mugshot here, in the past... So this Akiba Stanley was the deputy for Judge Ingram. And because of this whole fiasco where Akiba, she was arrested, she was helping this guy. His name is Christian Eppinger. She was helping him out. He was on trial with Thug and them. They have since severed his case after this whole fiasco. But because this Akiba Stanley was helping this Eppinger guy out and Stanley at that time was a deputy for Judge Ingram. Judge Ingram has said, you know what? Even though I am sure that I could rule on this case fairly and impartially, it just does not look good. So Judge Ingram wrote, on or about June 1st, 2023, Christian Eppinger was severed from the ongoing YSL RICO trial on the criminal action that was recently transferred to this court by random assignment. Although there is no severance order in the record, the court was apprised of the circumstances that directly led to Eppinger's severance. More specifically, the deputy assigned to and responsible for the courtroom and personal security of the undersigned for nearly six months was arrested. So she's talking about this lady. Lady Akiba was arrested. Said deputy who was still assigned to this court at the time of her arrest is accused of one colluding with defendant Eppinger during the current trial to commit a felony and two endangering the safety of citizens within the Fulton County Courthouse. Because this court's former assigned deputy could be called as a witness in any future proceedings in this case, the court may be called upon to assess this deputy's credibility or rule on matters related to her criminal prosecution. This may undermine the public's confidence in the impartiality of the proceedings. While the court does not regard the aforementioned situation as creating any actual bias for or against any party in this case, the court does view this as a matter that could cause a reasonable person to question the court's impartiality and reasonably give rise to the appearance of impropriety should the court remain on this case. So there you have Judge Ingram who actually had to recuse herself or at least she felt she she it would be better for her to recuse herself due to that relational situation y'all y'all know what i'm when i say relational i'm using air quotes so follow me all right so now this getting kind of serious now right things are are not so light and friendly as they were with uh with mr zachary and now we're going to come to another situation where one of the investigators actually was harassing one of the witnesses and this was one of the other situations where, like Mr. Zachary, there was an actually an, an arrest warrant put out for a witness in this trial. So we're going to see Mr. Adams questioning the witness about this situation. There we go. How about now, Mr. Harvey? Uh, anything for you, sir? All right. Um, let me ask it this way. Yesterday. Um, during the period of time after you'd been arrested by the district or pursuant to a warrant from the district attorney's office, you were actually being held back in a holding area. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. You recall that um, I came back there with um, uh, Mr. Steele, gentleman back there with the grayish white hair. Mr. Matthews, this gentleman right here with the very gray hair, right? <laughs> and Miss 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 uh, Westmoreland. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'll sustain that objection. 
at least you got here, um, and Miss Westmoreland, you remember that? Yes, sir. <laughs> we, we had a chance to talk yesterday, isn't that right? Yes. And when we were back there, we talked about the communication that you'd had with the district attorney's office, right? Yes. Um, now, you also remember that after you came out, you were asked some questions by the assistant district attorney, Miss Love. Is that right? Yes. You remember her asking you at one point, um, are you afraid of Jeffrey Williams? You remember that question? Yes. And then she may not have said Jeff Jeffrey Williams. She may have said, are you afraid of thug? You remember that? Yes. <laughs> okay. And your answer was no. Is that right? Yes. You have no reason and had no reason to be afraid of Jeffrey Williams. Is that right? No, I don't. Okay. In fact, when you testified yesterday, you were on edge. Is that fair to say? Yes. You were, you didn't want to be here. Yes. And part of it is because of the interactions and, and your reaction yesterday was based on the interactions you had had, not with Mr. Williams or anyone over here, but with the district attorney's office. Isn't that true? Yes. You told us when you were back there that they had been, quote, harassing you for a number of months. Is that true? Yes. And in fact, you said that prior to coming out and testifying that the only person you were afraid of, you didn't want to be around, was Investigator Hamilton from the district attorney's office. Is that true? Yes. And you're, you're saying that to us and then your testimony subsequent to that was based on the very the interactions that you had had with Mr. Hamilton. Isn't that right? Objection, Your Honor, vague as to the question. I stand the objection, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Hamilton had contacted you prior to yesterday. Is that right? Yes. He would call you from time to time. True? Objection, vague. What's the, what, what is, can I have some? Yes. Let me just answer the questions, okay? Mr. Mr. Hamilton had harassed you, is that correct? Yes. In fact, you told us when you were back there that you didn't want to come out and see him because he had sexually harassed you, true? Yes. You felt like, and you told us, that you were really concerned about coming out here. I'm going to object to the relevance. I'm a little bit objection. You told us that the times when he would contact you, it seemed like he was trying to date you. Yes. In your interaction with, and then Mr. Hamilton, you actually met with him at different locations. Is that right? Yes, I met him at a restaurant. Japanese restaurant off of Moreland Avenue? Yes. A couple months ago? Um, maybe, I think February. Okay. He wanted to meet you, supposedly to talk about the case. Yes. But, but he wanted to meet you by yourself. Yes. You did not feel comfortable with the interactions you've been having with the district attorney's office, and so you brought your 20-year-old son along uh, with you. Yes. So, Your Honor, just have him break it up so we'll know what she's answering. All right. I, 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 I'll break it up. You didn't feel comfortable going to meet him by yourself? Nope. Because you didn't feel comfortable going to meet him by yourself, you brought your 20-year-old son with you? Yes. Was that before or after you met with Mr. Hamilton, and he told you, don't talk to nobody else. That was after. He, he told me before that um, I came in, I seen Miss Love, and um, that's when I told y'all yesterday that me and Miss Love, we only discussed for a brief because they was like trying to tip me. And, um, that's when I went to talk to him and a um, couple of more people from their team that I don't see right now. And um, then he ended up getting me by himself and um, asking me um, to give him my number. 
and that he's gonna contact me and that I ain't need to speak with no one else. And if they contact me, do not um answer or speak to them. Only him. Okay. He told you that he would like to take you out when this was all over, didn't he? Yes. And then he's, as far as you know, he is an investigator, law enforcement investigator for the DA's office, right? Yes. You were, you weren't, you didn't have a problem discussing with the district attorney's office um, this supposed incident from back in 2013, right? No, I never had a problem. Right. And, and in fact, when going back to you being asked yesterday about whether you were scared or anything like that, when you met with the DA's office, you met with them so often that you actually lost your job, didn't you? Yes. They would contact you and say, hey, you got to come talk to us. And because of the number of times that you had to just kind of drop everything, leave your job, and come talk to them, you lost your job, didn't you? Yes. I stand in objection, Mr. Form. You can rephrase, Mr. Adams. You lost your job because of having to go meet with them, right? Yes, but they wasn't meeting with me every time they tell me to, though. Subsequent to or after you lost your job, Yes. Mr. Hamilton, the investigator, told you, don't worry about that. Take care of getting you another job, All right? Yes. So here we can see this is serious misconduct, kind of like the previous example. Both of these are very serious and really out of bounds for any professional situation. And um, just wow. I'm going to go ahead and play more of this examination of this witness so you can see how Miss Love treated her versus how Mr. Adams treated her. And you can get a sense for how both sides treated somebody who was essentially harassed and abused by the DA's office. But before that, as promised, I'm going to go ahead and sneak it in right here. I'm going to give you a little bit of a sense for whether or not QZ Mr. Quindarius Zachary, did he get the girl? We don't know, right? But there's there was a little hint, y'all. I'm going to put it right here, and then we're going to flow right into more of this examination of this witness who was harassed by the DA's office. So let's take a look. Um, you were asked, and, and it was worded this way, that Jeffrey stopped hanging around with Woody. Remember those questions on recross? Yes. From your vantage point, were people always trying to be around Jeffrey? A yeah. Objection, Your Honor. Vague and speculation. He can't overrule. Did, did Jeffrey allow people to take pictures with him? Objection, relevance. When they... Staying. Did, from your vantage point, did Mr. Copeland or Woody, did he, did Jeffrey go to him in any way or was Mr. Copeland trying to hang out with Jeffrey? Objection, relevance beyond the scope of redirect. It was on redirect. Overruled. Yeah, Copeland used to come okay. around. Okay. You were asked again on redirect about a supposed tweet of, and I, I'm not quoting it, but something like, we shoot at them and don't report, they shoot at us and report. I'm not saying that's a quote. Have you ever seen a tweet like that? Objection, Your Honor. Asked and answered on cross. Um, that was a microphone. All right. Um, Mr. Schroeder, have you made a decision? Do you have any recross? All right. You are now free to go. They put this on my lid? Yes. <laughs> They'll take care of that. Call your next witness. All right, y'all, I want you to pay close attention who gets up smiling and leaves the courtroom. 
I don't know if it means anything. I don't know if this is the investigator that Zachary was talking about, but maybe a little hint. I don't know. You, you, you let me know in the comments. Come on. this way yesterday um, during the period of time after you'd been arrested by the district or pursuant to warrant from the district attorney's office you were actually being held back in a holding area is that correct yes okay you recall that um, I came back there with um, uh, mr. Steele the gentleman back there with the grayish white hair mr. Matthews this gentleman right here with the very gray hair right <laughs> and Miss 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 uh, Westmoreland. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sustain that objection. <laughs> <laughs> At least you got here. Um, and Miss Westmoreland, you remember that? Yes, sir. <laughs> we we had a chance to talk yesterday, isn't that right? Yes. And when we were back there, we talked about the communications that you'd had with the district attorney's office, right? Yes. Um. Now, you also remember that after you came out, you were asked some questions by the assistant district attorney, Ms. Love. Is that right? Yes. You remember her asking you at one point, um, are you afraid of Jeffrey Williams? You remember that question? Yes. And then she may not have said Jeff Jeffrey Williams. She may have said, are you afraid of thug? You remember that? Yes. <laughs> okay. And your answer was no. Is that right? Yes. You have no reason and had no reason to be afraid of Jeffrey Williams. Is that right? No, I don't. Okay. In fact, when you testified yesterday, you were on edge. Is that fair to say? Yes. You were, you didn't want to be here. Yes. And part of it is because of the interactions and, and your reaction yesterday was based on the interactions you had had, not with Mr. Williams or anyone over here, but with the district attorney's office, isn't that true? Yes. You told us when you were back there that they had been, quote, harassing you for a number of months. Is that true? Yes. And in fact, you said that prior to coming out and testifying that the only person you were afraid of, you didn't want to be around, was Investigator Hamilton from the district attorney's office. Is that true? Yes. And... You're, you're saying that to us, and then your testimony subsequent to that was based on the very the interactions that you had had with Mr. Hamilton. Isn't that right? Objection, Your Honor, vague as to the question. I stand the objection. Okay. Mr. Hamilton had contacted you prior to yesterday. Is that right? Yes. He would call you from time to time. True? Objection, babe. What's babe? What, what is, can I have some? I'll you can answer. Yes. Let me just answer the questions, okay? Mr. Mr. Hamilton had harassed you, is that correct? Yes. In fact, you told us when you were back there that you didn't want to come out and see him because he had sexually harassed you. True? Yes. 
you felt like, and you told us, that you were really concerned about coming out here. I'm going to object Thank as to relevance. I'm a whole objection. You told us that the times when he would contact you, it seemed like he was trying to diss you. Yes. In your interaction with, and, and Mr. Hamilton, you actually met with him at different locations. Is that right? Yes, I met him at a restaurant. Japanese restaurant off of Moreland Avenue? Yes. A couple months ago? Um, maybe, I think February. Okay. He wanted to meet you, supposedly to talk about the case. Yes. But, but he wanted to meet you by yourself. Yes. You did not feel comfortable with the interactions you've been having with the district attorney's office, and so you brought your 20-year-old son along with you. Yes. Same question as the form. You said, Your Honor, if you could just have him break it up so we'll know what she's answering. All right. I, 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 I'll break it up. You didn't feel comfortable going to meet him by yourself? Nope. Because you didn't feel comfortable going to meet him by yourself, you brought your 20-year-old son with you? Yes. Was that before or after you met with Mr. Hamilton and he told you, don't talk to nobody else? That was after. He, he told me before that um, I came in, I seen Miss Love. And um, that's when I told y'all yesterday that me and Miss Love, we only discussed for a brief because they was like trying to tip me. And um, that's when I went to talk to him and a um, couple of more people from their team that I don't see right now. And um, then he ended up getting me by himself and um, asking me um, to give him my number and that he's going to contact me and that I ain't need to speak with no one else. And if they contact me, do not um, answer or speak to them. Only him. Okay. He told you that he would like to take you out when this was all over, didn't he? Yes. And then he's, as far as you know, he is an investigator, law enforcement investigator for the DA's office, right? Yes. You were, you weren't, you didn't have a problem discussing with the district attorney's office um, this supposed incident from back in 2013, right? No, I never had a problem. Right. And, and in fact, when going back to you being asked yesterday about whether you were scared or anything like that, when you met with the DA's office, you met with them so often that you actually lost your job, didn't you? Yes. They would contact you and say, hey, you got to come talk to us. And because of the number of times that you had to just kind of drop everything, leave your job and come talk to them, you lost your job, didn't you? Yes. I stand in objection, Mr. Form. You can rephrase, Mr. Adams. You lost your job because of having to go meet with them, right? Yes, but they wasn't meeting with me every time they tell me to though. Subsequent to or after you lost your job. Yes. Mr. Hamilton, the investigator, told you, don't worry about that. Take care of getting you another job, right? Yes. When you met with them, <clears throat> When you met with, I don't know. There was actually a time where you came here to the uh, courthouse to meet with either an investigator or someone else from the DA's office, true? Yes. Okay. Were you supposed to meet with uh, Ms. Love? 
You're supposed to meet with Miss Love? Yes. And you were brought here by an investigator, investigator Long, right? Yes. You ended up not speaking to Miss Love that day. Am I, am I correct? It's just for like a brief. Okay. Yeah, I would um, object and ask that the witness answered the question. Yes or no, I didn't understand it. Yes, sir. I'm going to rule the objection. She's, at, she's answered the question. Okay. When you, just to be clear, when you said a little, a little while ago that Miss um, Love tried to, to tip you, is that what you said? Yes. What did you mean by that? Because um, when I um, met with Miss Love at um, the Wendy's that she discussed, it was some things that um, we had talked about. And... Um, she told me like it was some things we talked about that wasn't gonna be brought up, but she wouldn't bring it up to me again. Oh, we, we wouldn't have to discuss it. Okay. All right. In um in your conversations, either with investigator or DA. They were asking you questions about 2013, correct? Yes. All right. And you were asked yesterday whether uh, you recall this supposed incident from back in 2013. Remember that? Yes. Yeah. Your answer yesterday was you really didn't remember, right? Yes. Not talking about yesterday now, but going back a couple of months, or whenever it was you met with them, you told them then, and them being the district attorney's office, whether it's an investigator or a DA, you told them then, I really don't have a lot of memory or remember much about 2013, right? Yes. Now, I want to ask you specifically um, about this supposed incident from back in 2013, okay? Do you recall making a report to Zone 3 police about an incident that you said occurred on May the 12th of 2013? Yes, sir. You do not? Yes, sir. Is it true that you told police officers in 2013 that Jeffrey Williams, DK, and someone you said was Jeffrey Williams's brother came to your house on Mother's Day? No, sir. Is it true that you told the police that they robbed you on that day? No, sir. Is it true that you told the police that Walt DK took your gun and then shot your gun into the wall? No, sir. That didn't happen, did it? No, sir. Back in 2013, I want to just ask you directly, and that was a, that was a long time ago, right? Yes. Is it fair to say that you were in a different place in your life back in 2013? Yes. In 2013, you had a, a child that had just been born, right? Yes. You had a, a, another son who was about 10 years old, right? Yes. And you were seeing um, a young man by the name of Micah Anderson. True? Yes. <clears throat> Ms. 
Ms. Kokomo, are you sharing the screen? All right. All right. Is that a picture of Micah Anderson? Yes. Okay. Now, Micah Anderson is um, the father of um, your child. Yes. He is also a, certainly back in 2013, he was a, a person who was in, in, in music. He was a rapper. Yes. His rap name was uh, Ola Player. Yes. All right. All right. With the court's permission, may I have Mr. Kokomo uh, publish on the screen uh, DS4, please? Yes, sir, you may. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Kokomo. All right. <coughs> For the benefit, uh, can you see, is there something on your screen next to your left hand? Yes. That is um, Micah Anderson, correct? Yes. That's the father of your, ch of your child? Yes. Okay. Father of child or children? Child. Okay. The, the youngest one? Yes. Okay. And... Um, that is the person that you've just referred to as Ola Player. Yes. Um, <coughs> also goes by the name King Slime? Not that I know of. Okay. I want to show you what's been entered into evidence as DS5. All right. Showing you DS5. All right. Do you recognize that picture? Yes. All right. Mr. Kokomo, and with, again, with course permission, DS5 on the screen, please. Yes. You may, sir. Thank you, Judge. All right. Now, you can look at the screen. You see that the screen depicts um, one, two, three, four, five, uh, six individuals, correct? Yes. Um, the person in the middle, that's you, isn't it? Yes. And you have on a uh, T-shirt on yes. the back which on the back says, Free King Slime. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. And on the bottom it says, Ola Player. Yes. And that is a picture in that, in that, uh, on a t-shirt of Mr. Anderson, Ola Player, correct? I can't hardly see it. Okay. How's that? Is that a little better? Not from right here. Okay. Well, what you were... That T-shirt that you were wearing um, on that day was essentially a T-shirt saying "Free Ola Player" or "Free King Slime." I mean, you're referring to the same person when you say "King Slime" and "Ola Player." True? I wouldn't say it's true, but um, I remember this day. I was at a um, club uh -huh. and someone was performing, and that shirt it was given to me, okay. and I wore it, and we performed some of his songs. Okay. When you say we, who's we? Me and the people in the pitch. Okay. You were in the, in the music game as well? Was I? Yes. Mm, nah, I just performed his songs. Okay. Like, he wasn't there. <laughs> Got you. Got you. All right, you can co take that down for right now, Mr. Skokomo. Um, so, again, back in, in 2013, <laughs> you were living at a location on Confederate Avenue. Correct? Yes. As a matter of fact, 980 Confederate Avenue. Does that yes. ring a bell? Yes. All right. Now, I don't want to embarrass you, but the truth is, you and Mr. Anderson um, stayed at that location together, right? Yes. Is, is it true that you all sold drugs out of that location? Yes. Okay. Um, and again, I'm... I, I, I want to be respectful, and, and this is just aimed at getting an answer, but would you consider yourselves, you and Mr. Anderson at that point, to kind of been like the neighborhood drug dealers? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. I mean, folks came to your place to get drugs, true? Yes. All right. In fact, as, as far back as like 2008, um, there was a burglary, or someone kicked in the door, and searched through that house when you weren't there, and you thought they were looking for drugs. 
Remember that? You say when? About 2000 and, excuse me, I said eight, 2005, as far back as 2005. Sound about right? I object as to relevance of something that happened in 2005 before this incident occurred. Well, we're talking about 2013. So. I sustain Okay. Um, around 2013, um, there were drugs being sold out of 980 Confederate Avenue. Sure? Yes. All right. In fact, um, in June of 2013 is when you and Mr. Anderson were both arrested for some drug trafficking charges in Clayton County, correct? I think it was in June, yes. Yeah. And a little bit after that, I think maybe in 2014, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, you and Mr. Anderson were again arrested for some drug charges um, specifically at 980 Confederate Avenue here in Fulton County, all right? Um, no, I remember I was arrested, but he wasn't arrested again with me. But you were both charged, mm. right? I'm not sure. Okay. If we were both charged. All right. Let me ask you if it would um, help to refresh your memory if I showed you a document in regards to uh, that Fulton County case. Do you think it would help to refresh your memory? Okay. All right. this document and specifically the you know I'll soon count this okay the sixth page of that document and ask you whether or not looking at that helps to refresh your recollection as to whether you and Mr. Anderson were charged uh, together. You say 2016. All right, but does that, does that refresh your memory about whether it was just you charged or whether it was the both of you that was charged in, in that Fulton County case? I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, know if both of us charged. Yeah. I wouldn't know if both of us were charged at the date that you saying, because they saying 2016. I guess they, they maybe charged us together. I wasn't sure. I just know when I got arrested, I was by myself. Okay, you were by yourself when you got arrested. Yeah. But you were arrested based on um, drugs that were found at 980 Confederate Avenue. Yes. Okay. Your Honor, this time I'm going to move for entry into evidence of uh, Williams number 213 as a certified document. Uh, no objection, Your Honor. It's the same as... Case exhibit 29 Alpha Alpha, which he would be admitting um, to your anyway. I'll admit that I'm going to strongly 13. Yes. And while I'm at it, I'm going to also move for entry into evidence um, of what I've labeled as defendant's exhibit number two. two Madam Court Report, I'm going to leave both of these right here. All right, so, Ms. Bennett, um, what we have somewhere around that period of time is um, some drugs that, drugs were being sold out of 980 Confederate Avenue, right? Yes. Uh, you were subsequently convicted of um, a drug offense uh, in Fulton County based on uh, drugs found at 980 Confederate Avenue, true? Yes. And you were subsequently convicted in Clayton County based on drugs that, well, a drug offense in Clayton County, right? Yes. And that was... Um, you and Micah Anderson in Clayton County. Yes. yes. You and Micah Anderson in Fulton County as well. True? Yes. All right. Now, isn't it true that in May of 2013, uh, Jeffrey Williams, DK, 
and someone named Buck Buck actually came to your apartment at 980 Confederate Avenue. Okay, P980. Yes. Do you remember that some, t or do you remember, uh, if, you, if you do, do you remember that sometime in May of 2013, Jeffrey Williams, DK, and someone named Buck Buck came to your apartment? No. Okay. Do you remember that uh, those three individuals came to your apartment, and it wasn't Mr. Williams, DK, and his, Mr. Williams' brother, but Mr. Williams, DK, and this person named Buck Buck? Do you remember that? No. Okay. Do you remember that uh, they came there uh, for purposes of buying or uh, getting some drugs from your apartment? No. Okay. Do you remember that uh, they came there and actually smoked with you and got high with you? No. Do you remember? Yeah, I'm going to um, object. object. Assuming facts that are not in evidence, and because the question is being asked, do you remember? I'm just saying you guys should just rephrase. Is it true that when those three individuals came to your apartment? Objection, Your Honor. It is still assuming facts that are not in evidence. Because he said it was a true win. Is it true that when those individuals came to your apartment, you smoked with them and got high with them? No. Is it true that when they left? Your Honor, I'm going to object. There is no fact and evidence that those three people came. And so when Mr. Adams keeps saying, is it true when, he is assuming facts that are not in evidence. And unless he... Okay. Your Honor, if I may just respond. I'm sorry? Well, Judge, I have to ask her the questions. I have a good faith basis to ask her the questions. And I have to ask her the questions and then have her either uh, admit or deny before I can then subsequently. There's no credit, that's what I'm saying. That's what she's objecting to. So you got to lay a little more credit. You may have a good <coughs> basis for it. There's no credit here. She's objection is, is, is has merit. Did those three individuals that I've just named, did they leave your apartment and Buck Buck take a quantity of heroin that you had at your apartment? I never had heroin, no. Did, at some point after those individuals left your apartment, you have a conversation with Micah Anderson about the fact Assume that Buck Buck had stolen heroin your from your honor. apartment? No. I, I, Objection. Did you, and then for purposes of, of, I think there's a lot of talking going on, um, did you, at some point after those individuals left your apartment, did you have a conversation with your boyfriend, Micah Anderson, about the fact that Buck Buck had stolen some heroin from your apartment? No. No. Okay. Did you receive a phone call after that incident, was someone apologizing for Buck Buck stealing the heroin from your apartment? No. Did you discuss with Mr. Anderson that Jeffrey Williams was going to pay for the heroin that Buck Buck had stolen from your apartment? Objection, Your Honor. That is would be hearsay and there is no exception for it. <laughs> Number one. Unless your honor, someone is on the list to prove that up, which there is not. There is. She, she cannot. The defense. Oh. Um, I'm going to respond to the objection. I'm going to support the objection. 
And so when around that time, right, and I'm talking about May of 2013, do you recall in the police report that Ms. Love asked you about making with, the, with Zone 3, that you told Zone 3 police officers that you had received a phone call apologizing for a robbery at your house? No. You don't remember that? No. Okay. The truth is that what actually happened in 2013 was that whole situation with Buck Buck stealing heroin from your apartment. Isn't that true? No. I mean, there certainly was no incident where DK shot into your apartment or anyone put a gun to your head. That never really happened, did it? No. Do you recall on May the 13th, right? So we got Mother's Day, that's May the 12th, right? You remember that? If, if you remember, it was a long time ago. No. Okay. Do you remember anything about May the 13th uh, having a police officer by the name of Officer Kirkland uh, coming to your apartment? No. Do you remember an Officer Kirkland and someone from the Atlanta Police Department crime scene unit coming to your apartment? Um, I don't know where officer came to my apartment, but um, I don't think it was on the 13th, but um, like my building, it, it had been shot at, so I don't know like exactly what day that was, but it just wasn't my, my, my specific apartment. It was the building. Okay. So if I heard you correctly, around that same time, and we don't remember the exact date, but around that same time, your building had been shot at? Yeah. Okay. Not specifically your apartment, just your building. Yeah. And and your apartment, or the building, <coughs> has multiple apartments, is that true? Yes. Do you recall, um, around May the 13th, receiving multiple phone calls from an officer Kirkland, um, trying to ask you questions about what you had supposedly uh, reported? No. You were, you've never had to come in to a courtroom to testify about any supposed robbery in 2013 at your apartment, have you? No, this I know. In 2013 or 2014 even, you were never contacted by anyone from the district attorney's office saying they wanted to talk to you about a robbery that occurred at your apartment in May of 2013. True? Nobody never contacted me 2013, 14, 15, nothing that. The first time that you were contacted or anyone asked you any questions about something that happened way back in 2013 was about a year ago. Is that right? Yes. And you told them that there was no robbery at your apartment in May of 2013. Isn't that true? Yes. I mean, you, you were never, you're not even aware of, of your name being included in any sort of a RICO indictment, are you? No. Or any incident from 2013 even being a part of any RICO indictment, right? No. Did anyone from the DA's office, anytime you spoke to them, whether it was an investigator or assistant DA, ever tell you, listen, we just want you to come in and, and, and say something about Jeffrey Williams? Anyone ever say anything like that to you? No.
Have you ever, do you know what the nature of the relationship is between, um, is or was, between Jeffrey Williams and um, Micah Anderson, all our player? Yeah, they did music together. Okay. They've been to the studio together, is that right? Yes. Okay. Have you ever, and, and this happened, I mean, I'm talking back in 2013, all right? They did music together back then. Probably, probably before that. <laughs> You were aware that they have been friends or had a relationship since before 2013 and after 2013, right? Yes. And, and certainly, um, there's no indication. The, the, the child that you had in 2013 is Michael Anderson's child, right? Yes. All right. Would you, if you were um, robbed, someone put a gun to your head and two. I'm going to object as to speculations. Okay. Was there ever any time in 2013 where you said to Micah Anderson, Jeffrey Williams and two other guys came to my apartment and one of them put a gun to my head? No. Was there ever a time where you said to Micah Anderson, Jeffrey Williams, and two other guys came to my apartment and one of them uh, shot into the wall while our child, your baby, was there? No. Was there ever a time where you told Micah Anderson that there was this robbery and shooting at your apartment and Micah Anderson still continued to record music with Jeffrey Williams? You repeat it. Yeah. Was there ever a time where you told Micah Anderson, hey, Jeffrey Williams, DK, and some other guy came and, and stole and robbed me and shot up my apartment. And then after that, Micah Anderson still continued to record music with the person who was supposedly involved with shooting up his house with his baby there? No. Were you ever, um, did you ever have occasion to go to uh, the studio uh, when uh, Mr. Anderson, all a player, and Mr. Williams uh, were there recording music? Yeah, I've been before. Okay, so you, you've been there with them together, right? Yes. Would that have been before May of 2013 or after? Might have been before. I'm not. I'm not sure. Okay. But certainly, you would tell this court, or you tell this jury, that after May of 2013, you and all our player so continues to have a relationship with Jeffrey Williams, right? Um. After May, I I had got arrested. Okay. So, yes. But I ain't, I ain't had like like no problems on there with him. Like we ain't had no problems. You were arrested in, in Clayton County in June, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then you actually went to, went into custody, went to prison in, was it 2015? Yes. And you were in there for how long? Um, I think like two years, six months. Okay. Now, you are still um, on probation for the Fulton County case, right? No. No? Is that done? Yes. Okay. Are you on probation in the Clayton County case? No, I'm done with that too. Okay. You've got another case that you're on probation for, right? A misdemeanor suspended Objection, license? Objection, Your Honor, um, as to improper impeachment and improper introduction of character regarding what Mr. Adams just asked. Go, goes to interest and bias. You got it. I'm when you met, okay, let's get to it. When, when you met and spoke with the DA's office, investigate uh, Mr. Hamilton, he was trying to get you to come to court, true? Yes. 
you told him that you couldn't come to court because you had a probation case in Clayton County, right? Yes. And so Mr. Hamilton knew that you had a pending case or a, a probation case in another jurisdiction based on what you told him, right? Yes. And what you told that investigator was that I can't come to court the next day because I got to go do 20 hours of community service in Clayton County. You told him that, right? Yes, because they said if I didn't do the community service, um, they were going to arrest me and suspend my license. That's what Clayton County said, right? Yes. And so you, you didn't come to court because you had to go do the community Can service. Can a on a date, <laughs> Okay. On Tuesday of this week, let me see, the 26th, right? The 26th of March, 2024. Right. You didn't come to court in the morning because you had to go and do the 20 hours community service in Clayton County, true? No. Okay. When I did had, you have to go? I had, um, had to go prior before then, but on Tuesday, I didn't come to court because um, I received a message from Mr. Hamilton, like, kind of late, because I had ended up blocking him because of... Uh, Sometimes I was getting phone calls. It wasn't about court. So I had blocked him. But um, on Tuesday, I ended up responding to him later because he told me that he had relation with the judge and he was going to get a warrant out on me and get me arrested. And um, I told him I would come in, but um, they ended up coming pick me up, and, like surround my house, move my cameras and stuff like that. He had my um my eleven year old outside for like a hour and a half by himself because he know I was it because it's only me and my kid. Cause you got locked up. Yeah. After your conversation with Mr. Hamilton of the DA's office. Yeah. Those texts. The, the, were you speaking with Mr. Hamilton and members of the DA's office by way of text messages? Sometimes text. Sometimes phone call. Okay. You still have uh, the phone that you shared those messages with the DA's office. Um, those messages still in that phone? Yes. Who has that phone? Mr. Hampton uh, took my phones and my ID. You have a moment, Judge. Ms. Bennett, I thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Ms. Bennett, did you testify on cross-examination with Mr. Adams that the reason you did not appear in court Tuesday, March 26th, was that you were afraid of Lieutenant Hamilton? Yes, I had blocked him. Did you send to anyone in the district attorney's office a communication stating that you did not go to court because you were in the hospital. Yes, I sent that to um, Mr. Hamilton. And did you send a communication to anyone in the district attorney's office stating you did not care what the judge said, no one could make you testify, and give, did you give specific, explicit, Instructions as to what to tell the judge to do. Objection, compound question. No. I, I will rule really the objection. Did you tell anyone in the district attorney's office that the judge could kiss your ass? <laughs> no. I, I told Mr. Hampton to have the judge to call me so I could tell him I've been harassed. That's exactly what I said. You're on permission to treat the witness pursuant to Brown? I'll allow it. Thank you. Ms. Bennett, isn't it true? Okay, and I'll, and I'll overrule the objection. Likewise. I've already, already been made. Ms. Bennett, I'd also like to see these. Is it? Say, I'm sorry? I'd also like to see these messages that she's referencing that this attorney has those in possession. That's a different issue, but I'm going to rule the objection at this point in time. You can take, we can take that up a little later. Ms. Bennett, isn't it true that when you met with me the first time. I was with Chief Investigator Randolph when we were at the Wendy's on Norland Avenue. I don't know his name, but you were with somebody. Isn't it true we met you in an SUV and you pulled up with your three sons? 
with my two sons and my stepson. Isn't it true that you described the boys or the young men with you as your three sons? Yes. Isn't it true that you told me that one of the children was not yours biologically, but you promised that child you would never leave him? Yes. Isn't it true you were about two hours late to that meeting with us? No. Isn't it true that you told us that the reason it took you so long is you were handling another matter with your cousin and a domestic violence situation? Yes. Isn't it true that when I what first asked you... Your Honor, the witness can be permitted to explain her answer. Hold on. Madam, did you have something else you want to say? Yes. Go ahead, finish your thought. I'm just going to ask her what, what, what my cousin... Um, Domestic violence got to do with this. Like, see, though, I mean, she be, she be. You're being examined, no, no, no. so okay. you have to answer the okay. question. Okay. okay. All right. Isn't it true, uh, Miss Bennett, that you indicated to us you did not want to speak with us about the 2013 incident? No. Isn't it true that you said when I asked you, or at least when I told you I wanted to speak with you about something that happened to you in 2013? that you told me I've blocked out that entire time in my life. Yes. Isn't it true that you teared up and said that you had gone to prison and while you were in prison, your mother became terminally ill? Yes. Isn't it true that you said and had on a shirt when we met that was commemorating the date and your mother? Objection relevance. Overruled. Yes. Isn't it true that you began to, when I asked you, did you ever get counseling? Better yet, did I ask you about counseling? Yes. Isn't it true that you told me that you had wanted to harm yourself because of everything that you had gone through? Yes. Isn't it true that I told you that you should get some kind of counseling for that? You told me you'll help me, but you didn't. Thank you for saying that. So we discussed counseling. <laughs> yes. Isn't it true that I communicated with you beyond that via telephone at various times? Objection, babe. I'll rule. I mean, I'll sustain the objection. You can rephrase. Isn't it true that we talked even after that? Yeah, you, you. Isn't it true that I called you to check on how you were doing? And probably like two, three times after that. Okay. Isn't it true that I told you that I wanted you to speak with our victim advocates at this office? Objection yes. Relevance? Overruled. Objection passed on into evidence. Overruled. Isn't it true that I asked you about Jeffrey Williams while we were in New Orleans? on Moreland in the Wendy's parking lot. Yes. Isn't it true that I asked you whether Micah Anderson and Jeffrey Williams were friends before an incident in 2013? I don't remember you asking me that, but they was. I was going to say that. And isn't it true that you said that they were? Yeah. Isn't it true that you never once said that the incident did not occur? Yeah. Okay. Now, isn't it true that you were called down and appeared here in this courthouse in the hallway earlier this year, before this week? Yes. Isn't it true that I came outside and sat down on the bench next to you? I don't remember when you sat down, but you came out. Isn't it true that I asked you how you were doing? Yes. Isn't it true that you told me you were beginning to feel like you wanted to harm yourself again? Yes. Isn't it true that I asked you what caused you to feel this way? Yes. Isn't it true that you told me you, Miss Love, you are the reason I'm starting to feel this way? Mm-hmm. Isn't it true that I then left your presence? Yes. Isn't it true that a victim witness advocate came to talk to you? I don't know who it was. 
Do you recall a young lady about my height with curly hair coming to talk to you? I don't know if she was your height. Do you recall a young lady coming to talk to you with curly hair? And an accent? No, I remember a lady, but I don't think she was she was tall. But then it was like a couple of ladies, so. A couple of ladies, thank yeah. you. Do you remember a shorter lady and a taller lady coming to talk to you from our office? Yes, I think they were from your office. Do you remember them talking to you about you wanting to harm yourself? One of them was talking about that, and then one of them was talking about something else. Do you remember them calling the Georgia Crisis Hotline for you? Yes, I think they did. Do you remember indicating that you did not want to wait for them to arrive, and you would rather call an Uber? No, Mr. Hamilton told me to um, leave. He told me he told me to, to come with him and leave. The, the lady told me to uh, stay because they called the hotline. And he, he told me, he, he told her, she ain't staying. She finna go. She all right. She all right. Yeah. Is it your testimony that Mr. Hamilton instructed someone from our office to leave you all? Yeah, I, I went with him. They stayed. I gave her my phone number. Matter of fact, she just went. Um, the lady who I talked to, she just went. Um, I seen her earlier. She had on a gray suit. She was in the courtroom she, earlier. She said, um, no, nah, she she came in the um the room back there with me. She said she was going to get me some paperwork now so that she was finally getting the paperwork that, that what she supposed to been giving me a long time ago. Was that Miss Kelly? I don't know her name. Did she have a short bob? Yes. Okay, is she shorter than I? Am? Yes, but you said she taller than you, but she not. So did you meet with a Miss Kelly, who is shorter than I am, and a young lady who's taller than she is. I don't know her name, ma'am. Just say that. Miss Bennett, isn't it true that you repeatedly stated you did not want to come in and testify? <clears throat> yes. Isn't it true that never once did you tell anyone in the district attorney's office that this incident where you alleged that Thug, DK, and Thug's brother robbed you? Did not occur. Yes. Each one of y'all I talked to, I told y'all the same thing that I didn't know nothing about what y'all was talking about, and y'all start pressing the issue like you you gotta go in, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. Like, Isn't it true that the only thing that we told you you had to do was to appear for such a subpoena? What subpoena? Ms. Bennett, is it your testimony that you never received a subpoena to appear in court? No, yeah, I, I, I received word of mouth or text when I got to come to court. I never had a paperwork telling me I had to come to court. Ms. Bennett, so your testimony is that you were never served a subpoena? Judge, you are asked an answer. I can't say I was served a subpoena, but I know the first time somebody came and seen me was like last year. And that's when they first talked about the incident and they showed me a police report and they was like, um, to your knowledge, did you make this? And when I read the police report, it, it didn't make sense. And I told them no. And um, I don't I don't know his name. And he, he let me read it. And he was like, um, do you remember anything, anything like this happening? And I was like, no. And um, then he had me sign the paper. But he had the police report on top of the paper that he had me sign. So I didn't get to read that paper. And um. He was, I was asking him, but I asked him what I signed for, and he told me he, I was signing because he need proof that I came and seen him, and he he seen me, and I had to sign that he seen me. And so I asked him, I'm like, so I'm in any type of trouble, like, do I supposed to go to court? Because I'm like, he talking about, um, I was a witness to a crime in 2013. I'm like, sir, do you know what, what year it is? I was like, I can't really tell you nothing about 2013 beside my child, like, a lot of things had happened to me, and I told him I couldn't discuss that with him. And he just told me to sign a paper stating that he seen me, but he didn't tell me what the paper is. He didn't let me read it. It was another paper on top of the paper, so I didn't even know why I was signing for. I probably could have signed my life away because he didn't let me read it. Isn't it true that you were served a subpoena on that day and you were given that piece of paper? I wasn't given anything. Only thing I ever had was cards with different. Um, 
attorneys or investigators or some like numbers and stuff like that on there. What did the person who talked to you that day look like? I can't even remember. Was I just it know it's a man. I know it's a man. Was it a tall man? I don't remember him being tall. Isn't it true that it wasn't Lieutenant Hamilton? No, it wasn't him. Okay. And I know exactly how he looked. Not, I'm sorry, what? I said I know exactly how he looked. And isn't it true that you had no knowledge of a Lieutenant Hamilton on May 13, 2013? No. So you did not have knowledge of a Lieutenant Hamilton on that day? Is okay. that correct? Okay. Yes. Um, how many um, times do you want me to Hold say? on, hold on, wait a second. I'm going to sustain the objection. And isn't it true that on May 13th of 2013, I have never spoken to you in my life? Repeat it. Isn't it true that on May 13th, 2013, you had never spoken with me in your life? I never said I did. I'm asking a question, though. Is it not true that you've never spoken to me up until that point? No. So is it fair to say you didn't know me or Lieutenant Hamilton on May 13, 2013? I never said I did. I, 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 she did not answer. No, she just answered speaking to us. All right, I'll rule no, objection. I answered. You asked rule me. The objection. I said no. I'm sorry, no to what? To the question you just asked me. That you did not know either me or Lieutenant Hamilton and I said on no. May 13, 2013. I said no again. Okay, thank you for clarifying. Three times. Now, you were asked by um, Mr. Adams on cross-examination about an exhibit that was tendered by the defense. Do you recall me showing you State's Exhibit 29 Alpha Alpha yesterday? Oh, yesterday, yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. And is... 29 Alpha Alpha, your Fulton County conviction from 2000 and 16. Yes, that's what it say. Say that again? Yes, that's what it say. Okay. Your Honor, the State Tender States Exhibit 29 Alpha Alpha, the self-authenticating certified documents reflecting Ms. Bennett's conviction here in Fulton County. Any objection to states 29 Alpha Alpha? If it's the same uh, as the exhibit that I've entered previously, then no, I have no objection. <clears throat> All right, it's admitted. Thank you. Now, Ms. Bennett, isn't it true that you are the person that signed this plea of guilty form? You, It was filled out and you read it. Yes. And isn't it true that you entered a guilty plea to the charges on this indictment? Yes. Isn't it true that this indictment number is 16SC140484? Yes. Isn't it true that you pled guilty to participation in criminal street gang activity? That what was on there? I'll let you work it. Take your time. Let me know if you finish. Yes. And isn't it true that you also pled guilty to possession of marijuana with the intent to distribute? Yes. And possession of a Schedule Four controlled substance? Yes. I'm going to now show you State's Exhibit 28 Alpha Alpha and ask you to take a look at State's Exhibit 28 Alpha Alpha. Alpha Alpha, the same uh, exhibit that Defendant Williams' attorney, Mr. Adams, showed you and labeled as Defendant's Exhibit 212. 
I'll let you look at this page. <clears throat> You're saying, is these the same? Yes. Yes. Okay. Isn't it true that you in the document labeled Defendant's Exhibit 212, you pled guilty there, or at least were adjudicated guilty, for possession of marijuana with the intent to distribute. Yes. And for having control of cocaine, a controlled Schedule II drug. Isn't it true that those are the charges you pled guilty to? Yes. Isn't it true that you never pled guilty to possession of heroin? I ain't never had heroin. Okay. What gang are you a member of? I'm not a member of a gang, but they um they charged me for it. <laughs> Which gang did they charge you with being a member of and participating in criminal street gang activity? Of um, blood gang activity. And which blood gang was that? I don't think they said. Which blood gang were you affiliated with? With uh, ABG. What is ABG? They never told me. Who never told me? When I got my charges, they never told me. They just said I was affiliated. Well, anything that my baby daddy was affiliated in, I, I was affiliated to the same thing. And when you said my baby's daddy, you're speaking of Michael Anderson, aren't you? Yeah. Now, isn't it true that you have shirts and clothing with the letters ABG on them? Do I have shirts and clothing with them on them? Isn't it true that you own at least one article of clothing with the letters ABG on it? Yes, I don't have a shirt with it on there. All right. And on that article of clothing where you have ABG, what does it stand for? Uh, it was a rap group. What's the rap group name? I can't think of the name of it. Is it your testimony it doesn't stand for Atlanta Blood Gang? No, I don't think it stands for Atlanta Blood Gang. Oh. Are you related to Rayshawn Bennett? No. Do you know Rayshawn Bennett? Yes. Are you all close? No. Do you know, did you know Donovan Thomas? No. Did I ask you about Donovan Thomas when we met on Moreland Avenue? I can't remember. Do you remember tearing up when I asked you about Donovan Thomas? Oh, no, yes. Okay. You said, oh, no, yes. So. Yeah, I had to think about who you said. All right. Is not the name that you call Donovan Thomas? Yeah, I knew him by a real name too, but I didn't hear what you said. Okay. How long did you know Donovan Thomas? Uh, for a long period of time. Since you were what age, approximately? <clears throat> 15 or something. Since you were about 15? Yeah. So, did we talk about um, him being killed when you and I met on Northern Avenue? Yeah, you said something about him. And did you indicate that it was messed up what happened to him? Yeah. <clears throat> How is it that you knew Donovan Thomas or no? We went to school together. Were you all in the same grade? No. Who was older? I don't know which one of us were older. And would you call him a friend? Yeah. Now, Mr. Adams asked you on cross-examination about your relationship with Defendant Jeffrey Williams. I'm going to show you what we will mark as State's Exhibit 30 Alpha Alpha. And Your Honor, I'd like to um, show to counsel for the defendants. Hold on. Please. Hang tight with Ms. Ms. with Ms. Bennett. What's your request, sir? Your Honor, um, 
can can you if if you agree with this can you please enforce the following i believe that there is discovery that we're entitled to i'd like to have it before miss bennett leaves i know i'm not doing the cross but i heard about text messages um under 1716 4a we should get the written because that's a written communication with a witness and then i'd like the court to um enforce the brady rule brady versus maryland because what i heard is that this witness had a conversation with the district attorney and maybe investigator randolph about donovan thomas and teared up we're charged with assisting in the murder that that goes to um her potential bias um i heard that um miss love was causing the witness to feel like she is um going going to got to commit suicide that goes to the witness's mental state we're entitled to that and then i'd ask you to it's a second time miss love in front of the jury this time last time it was not in front of the jury she said that there will be no witness to testify that there were drugs stolen by buck buck this is not her quote but this is what she was talking about and that then there is no one on the witnesses to do that she doesn't know that and it's not true It's the second time I say because it's the same thing with accusing me of not being candid with the Sonoma Court about Mr. Bean going to Grady Hospital, which he did. I knew he went to Grady Hospital. The court knows he went to Grady Hospital. Everyone knows that, but Ms. Love says there, there's no evidence about it whatsoever. She shouldn't be doing that, neither especially one you, in front of the Yeah, jury. neither one of you should really be doing that. Plus, savings of counsel are not, are not evidence anyway, so I'm going to instruct the jury about that. But to your point, um, have you all turned over or are you going to turn over the, uh, if there are text messages between uh, your office and this witness? Um, Your Honor, I can certainly provide to counsel for the defense the hi, how are you doings between me and Ms. Bennett, and I will gladly do that. Um, there's also a video of when she was taken into custody that we are trying to upload um, so that that can be in their hands as well. I don't have any problem with that. What about this? Okay. I apologize. About what, apologize. what about the statements or about the text messages between your investigator and her? We can do that as well, Your Honor. We can right. them every, whatever, all of that. All right. Well, here's the thing. You all should have turned, made steps to turn that over already. I mean, that's that's kind of what that's kind of what causes this lag a lot of times. Because think about it. You all, or it gets presented. They, being the defendants, ask about it, and then you know we all get put in the untenable position of it's delayed when it could have been provided up front. You all are not novice advocates Honor, you all are very seasoned so why wouldn't you just turn over the stuff when you got it and let them have it because your honor there was nothing no substance to it i it, i mean i don't mind giving whatever it is that they're asking when i call her and ask her hey how are you doing happy new year and all of that and she says thanks same to you i don't consider that things that they're asking for but if i don't they want, think they're that, welcome that, to have i don't think that that's what they're Concerned about neither is the court. But that's the uh, nature of our conversations but, and hers with our other members of our office. So we will give them all of that to show the court and counsel for the defense. I'm not necessarily, and I don't think they're probably thinking about the pleasantries but, that you're having with with your with your witnesses. That is the only that those are but, the only text messages that exist. If there are, so you're telling you're telling the court that there are no other text messages between your team that is your investigative team with this witness concerning any any discussions that she has referenced on the stand discussions regarding the day she told me she wanted to commit suicide and I was getting to that part and I haven't yet done it but earlier with Mr. Adams she testified um, I believe um, that well inconsistently with the actual facts of what happened okay That still doesn't resolve the issue of you have to turn over these statements. I mean, especially if that's what they claim they are in terms of, you know, um, and, and the earlier the better. Your Honor, I get uh, there. To be clear and concise, there are no statements. There are pleasantries. There are us reaching out to her. We will give you and to the defense all of those, but. To the extent that there is an insinuation that there are some statements or there are things beyond that, there is not that. So I will not only give that to them, I will make available the witness 
with whom the communication was made. So they're going to have every opportunity to flush out whatever spin or whatever fat tail they want to spin. We're not hiding anything. We don't have any reason to hide anything. We will give them anything they ask for. So um, I don't have the luxury of not turning over things to the defense. I don't have it. So to the extent that they want something like that, I'll give it to them. I don't mind. All right. Well, like I said, if it comes up later, I'll, um, unfortunately, I'll be put in a position where I'll deal with it. But, you know, disclosure is probably the better course in, in everyone's circumstance. And I'd remind the defense as well, if you've got things that you, because you've opted in reciprocal discovery, you need to turn those over timely and appropriately. I, I think that what um, you just heard, though, is forgetting that the witness said to the district attorney and investigator Randolph, I do not recall anything from 2013 because of trauma. That is totally... Well, if it's memorialized... She said that to me, to be that, clear. That is Brady. D to D say, for a witness to say, I don't recall, for whatever reason, that is impeaching. Your Honor, That is I a prior, that is a statement <clears throat> that goes against... Um, and can be, that's why prior inconsistent statements, and it's an inconsistent statement. That was not turned over. The point I'm trying to make to you is what I said, it's, I do, and I don't accept the representation that was just made because these are examples of Brady. So I'd like all Brady to be enforced. That's all I'm at, I'm, and it's not that I want something or I, I request it or, these are the rules. Okay. And, Your Honor, um, given that Mr. Um, Adams is the examining attorney, I would ask that Mr. Adams be the one that's required to make these objections. But, Your Honor, I will point out to the court that prior to Ms. Bennett ever taking the stand, I made everyone aware that she was claiming that she blocked out a whole period of time. On direct, I asked her, did you say you blocked out? She has testified that she said things did not happen. She never told us that. She never told us that. So to the extent that, one, there were statements that were made that we have made everyone aware of, there's no withholding, there's no Brady violation, there's no nothing like that. And an assertion, a bare, just bare blanket assertion, doesn't make it true. Secondly, if there were a statement given to me in the presence of an investigator, not only have we provided all of our witnesses, made ourselves available to make the witnesses available to them. Mr. Steele talked to Ms. Bennett. I still don't know whether or not he has any recordings. I still don't know what he has with respect to what she told him. So I think that's a little disingenuous to assert, but that's, you know, that's on him and he can do what he wants. But Your Honor, um, there is no, we are not withholding anything. We haven't withheld anything. Okay. And of course we will, uh, comply with our obligations of discovery and candor to the court at all times. All right. Summon Ms. Bennett, please. All right, madam, you may resume. Thank you, Judge. Ms. Bennett, before we were allowed to recess for a break, the state put before you a picture, a photograph we've labeled as State's Exhibit 30 Alpha Alpha. You recognize the people in the photograph, don't you? Yeah, not all of them. You recognize yourself in that photograph, don't you? Mm-hmm. And that's a true and accurate representation of you in that photograph, isn't it? You ask me, is that me? Yes, I am. Okay, could you ask me that? Yes. All right. Your Honor, the state tender states is at 30 Alpha Alpha as evidence. Any, for, any objection to states 30 Alpha Alpha? No objection to the exhibit. Uh, not previous objection, the time, uh, All right, I'll sustain. I mean, I'll uh, overrule the objection, and it may be published as you see fit. Thank you. Would you tell the jury where you are located? I'm going to give you. Uh, 